Valley crowd off to our left. That's eight batters in a row now that he has retired after giving off that leadoff triple. Here's the pitch, and it is a little bit inside. One ball, no strike. Well, actually, Mark Hankey got a one-out single in the second, but he was doubled up. So he's faced the minimum since that triple. The pitch blown away. <laughs> two balls, no strikes. Should be two hits up there for the Cats. Yeah. Correct him down there. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Three zero. In for a strike, Jason looking at that one all the way. Well, Lem Cooler on the first pitch, grounded to third. Dedrick likewise going out for the first pitch, and he fouled out the good pastor at first base. Now 3-1 to Albrand, and he's on with a base on balls. First walk given up by Denbo. And here's Chris Hankey, who has the Cats only RBI of the night. Bowie threatened in that first inning to have the bases loaded, throw to first, and the runner back in time. But Pritchett then was picked out first on a snap throw to the catcher, Blake Kruger. The pitch, runner going, the pitch is down low. There's a throw and it goes, oh, thought that was ticketed for center field. A great play by Pritchett. He kept that from sailing into center field. And Jason would have been off and running toward third. It'll be a stolen base for Jay. Yeah, he did a good job getting over to keep that one from going in the center. That ball was tailing away toward right center field. For Albrand, he is ninth stolen base of the year. Pass ball in there for a strike. Chris Hankey. Now with a one ball, one strike count on him. Outfield straight away and deep. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Way outside. Kearns, the catcher, had to lean out. Backhand that ball. Big run at second base for the Cats. They'd like to get Jason Albrand home for the second time of the game. Here's a pitch. Swung on a tap foul. Pitch jammed Chris a little bit. He just got a piece of it. Now Denbo's even up with him at two balls, two strikes. Weiniger off to the right, hoping to get up this inning. Hankey will have to get aboard to bring Wino up. Denbo steps up on the rubber, has a sign of a 2-2 pitch. Curve, bounce toward short. Shortstop comes in, a tricky hop, throw to first. He's out. Good stretch over there by Good Pastor and a good play by Harrell at shortstop. That was a tough chance. He had to charge that ball. For a moment, it looked like Chris Hankey was going to beat it out, but Harrell's throw was low. Good Pastor reached out and backhanded it. And in the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. The Cats strand a runner. And we move now to the bottom of the third. Still a one nothing Jasper lead. Bottom of the third inning, Robbie Denbo, the number nine hitter in the order for Springs Valley, followed by the leadoff man, Mark Parsons, and then Drew Kearns. One run, two hits for the Wildcats. All zeros for Springs Valley as Robbie Denbo steps in to face Steve Huffman. Here's the first pitch to Denbo, low inside. One ball, no strikes. Denbo, for the most part, has not batted a whole lot this year. Normally, they DH for him. Here's the pitch. It's up high. Two balls, no strikes. Well, after a rocky first inning, Huffman struck out two and got Darren Kearns to fly out the left in a 1-2-3 inning for Valley in the second. But he's quickly fallen behind. Two balls and no strikes to Denbo here, opening the third. Right-hander ready to pitch. In for a strike. Two balls and a strike. Cats with Chris Hankey at third, Jason Albrand at short, Mark Hankey at second, and Brett Weiniger at first base. 2-1 pitch. Here it is. Just missed, blown away. Three balls and a strike. Brad Albrand at left, Brad Dedrick in center, John Lemkuler in right. Blake Kruger the catcher, and Steve Huffman going after his sixth win of the year. He's trailing Denbo here, three balls, one strike. The pitch, low ball four. So, for 
for the second time in three innings now. Huffman starts an inning off by issuing a walk. Well, he's evened it up. He's four walks and four strikeouts. Here's Parsons. Parsons walked his first time up. Now they'll run the warm-up jacket out to Robbie Denbo at first base. Terry Gobert steps out of the dugout. Shot something out to his infield. Dunbo dons a warm-up jacket at first base. Parsons, a left-handed batter. Hitting 270 as he steps in there. What are we waiting for, folks? Time now, uh, Dembo with a jacket on and in steps Parsons and Huffman checks the runner over the shoulder and the pitch to him. Swing and a miss. No balls, one strike. Cats with one run, two hits. Valley with no runs, no hits. Both teams have played airless baseball. The Wildcats have had only really one chance in the field. That was a fly ball off Brad Albrand. Swung on and grounded up the middle. Mark Hankey off oh, his glove into the uh, center field. Here is Denbo rounding the bag, and he'll hold on. That'll be a hit up the middle. Hanky ranging far to his right, tried to backhand the ball. It kind of ran up his arm and scooted on into center field. So the Hawks are back in business again here in the third is for the second inning in three now. They've gotten the first two men on. And here's Drew Kearns. The stretch. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. A good fastball. Those bases on balls. Ooh. We should be used to them by now, I guess. Huffman throws it into center field. Denbo gets up. He'll not be able to advance. He didn't see it there. <laughs> Huffman wheeled the throw to Jason Albrand, who had cut in behind a runner and threw it into the dirt. And fortunately for the Wildcats, Denbo was sprawled out, reaching for second base, and wasn't aware that the ball had sailed into center field. Brad Dedrick came in and got it back into the infield quickly, and so the runners have to hold it first and second base. No balls, one strike. The pitch, two curves. Here it is, curve. Uh-oh, deep drive, left field. Back goes Dedrick, back goes Aubrey. He makes the catch right in front of the bleachers. Kearns gave that one a long ride to the power alley in left center. Aubrey was able to race back there and make the catch. So, Brad Aubrey has recorded both outs that have been hit here tonight. Otherwise, all the other outs have been recorded by Kays. Here's Freeman who fanned his first time up. One out now, runners still at first and second. The stretch by Huffman and the pitch. Swing and a miss at a good fastball. Brent Harrell, their cleanup man, is on deck. Boy, you hate to see him keep coming up with men on base, Al. Uh, you can't let that happen too many times. The 0-1 pitch, here it is. Fastball just missed inside. One ball, one strike. You give them enough opportunities, you're going to get hurt. But the Cats have been pitching with men on base 95% of the time this year. And most of the time, they've been able to handle it. Now the 1-1, here it is. Swing and a miss. He had a good rip and a fastball up around the letters. One ball and two strikes on Freeman. Cats could use a double play like Valley had to end the second inning. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Strike three call. He slipped the fastball over the outside corner. Freeman wanted to throw the bat. He was so disgusted at himself. Strike on number five by Huffman. Cats lead it one to nothing, and now they're two gone, and here's the very dangerous Brent Harrell. 
That ball is really jumping off of the bat. Jay Albrand and Chris Hankey both crushed him in the first inning. Drew Kearns hit one deep to left center here in this inning, but out. There's a pitch. Back uh -oh, way back. Let's this go. is going to be out of here. Way back. Out of here. A three-run homer. Fred Harrell, we just told you you cannot let that guy come up too many times with men on base. And he just showed us why. A three-run homer. Over the left center field screen, and the Blackhawks have grabbed a three-to-one lead. Fred Harrell just homered. He got it up, and Harold got it out. So the leadoff walk comes back to haunt us. Here's Pritchett, who walked and then was picked off at first base. That's the... 16th homer given up by Wildcat. No, oh, that's not right either. The 14th home run given up by Wildcat pitching this year. There's a one ball pitch. It backs him away. Two balls, no strikes. Three to one, Valley leads it. Huffman into the line of the 2-0 pitch. Here it is. Inside, ball three. Oh, well, the Cats will have to battle back, and they get a tough cookie to do it against on the mound, Robbie Denbo. Denbo, when he goes back to the mound, will have at least a two-run lead. And he can thank shortstop Brent Harrell for that. Here's the 3-0 pitch. In for a strike, three and one. Bobby Denbo started it off with a leadoff walk. Parsons then singled. Kearns slide to left. Freeman struck out, but then Brent Harrell got a two-out, three-run over. Inside ball four, he walked it. That's the fifth walk given up by Hubby. And here's Pat Huddleston, who fanned his first time up. Brad Weiniger strolling in from first base. Blake Kruger, the catcher, is out there talking with his big right-handed battery mate. Cats find themselves down here, three to one, on the three-run blast by Harrell. Still plenty of time, though. We're on the bottom of the third. Now Huffman looks into Kruger for the sign as he got set to work on Huddleston. Here's the pitch. High for a ball. One ball, no strike. Now Terry Gobert's going to come out of the dugout. He's going to walk slowly to the mound. Time out here at Recreation Field. Cats trailing 3-1 to one the Valley. Now this. That's a 3-1 ball game and uh, Springs Valley with three big runs right now and a three-run home run by Brent Harrell have taken the lead. A couple of walks by Steve Huffman. There's two outs. Runner on first for Valley. So the damage could still continue. The pitch. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Simmers up throwing at a bullpen down a right field line. That might uh, signal the fact that Mark Hankey would be coming in in case Huffman uh, runs into any further problems. And uh, Hankey will probably go to the bullpen between innings. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. Huddleston. Wasn't quite sure he wanted to go for that one, and it was actually out of the strike zone. Huffman, we understand, did have some shoulder problems this week and has not really thrown that much in practice. No, he hadn't. So that might be part of the problem. Here's a one-two. Kerr struck him out. Also uh, kind of had a hamstring problem and didn't do a whole lot of running this week. But Huddleston fans, six strikeout for Huffman, but a productive inning for Springs Valley. They get three runs on two hits, no errors, one man left on base. After three complete here at Recreation Field, it's 3-1 Springs Valley.
out of the batter's box, not happy with the call. And it'll be Brett Weininger leading things off, followed by Blake Kruger and Brad Albrand. The Caps by themselves in the hole, three to one. You know, it's been a while, too, since Mark Hankey's done any pitching. There's a pitch, high outside, one ball, no strikes. He's not pitched at all during the tournament. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Outside, 2 and nothing now to wind up. Weininger, Kruger, and Brad Albrand. Anyone gets on, Mark Hankey. Outfield has swung around and looked for that center fielder's playing Weininger. Strike at the inside corner. Weininger strolls out of the batter's box, not happy with a call. Terry Gobert coaching at third. Danny Sherry at first. The left fielder, Kearns, is way, way off of the line. There's a pitch inside. Three balls, one strike. That would almost look like it was in the same identical spot as the third pitch. Just a fraction off. I guess. Low ball four. There's a start. Weininger draws the walk. The second walk issued by Robbie Denbo. And here's Blake Kruger. Side. The catcher couldn't find it momentarily, but it was right in front of him. Kruger started the day hitting 352. Four homers, 26 runs batted in. He improved on that in that win over Vincennes. Blake had three runs batted in. Bouncing ball to third. Might be a double play. Over to second out, and here's the relay. Not in time. Kruger hustling down the line. Beat the relay throw. So it's a fielder's choice. Valley's played pretty good defense throughout uh, this regional out. They have. I'm kind of impressed with their defensive ball club. Normally, you take a young ball club and uh, you put the ball in play and they're going to throw it somewhere. So far, they've not done that. Here's Brad Albrand. Brad looks at a pitch in for a strike. No balls, one strike, three to one. Valley leads. Three run homer by shortstop Brent Harrell. Gave him the lead. Ground ball to the right side. The first baseman knocks it down. Good passer gets up. Throws to the pitcher covering in time. Robbie Denbo did a great job at first, but I'll tell you, credit good passer with flagging that one down. He's a chunky lad down there, Al, but he's come up with some pretty good defensive plays down there tonight. He can move down there, and he dived along the ground to stop that one, and then the pitcher making a Good move over to first, was able to get it and make the out. Again, defensively, this Spring Valley team is making all the plays right now. So Kruger goes to second base on the ground out. Here's Mark Hanke. Pitches high for a ball. I tell you, you don't want to miss an opportunity to pick this run up here. If you well, can. They need to keep packing away. The way Springs Valley's playing, you're going to have to earn everything you get, though. Check swing outside. Two balls, no strikes. Ryan Seibert is on deck. Denbo going after his 12th win of the year. He's lost twice. That one backs him away. Three and nothing now. He's fallen behind Mark Yankee. Seibert, capable of hitting a long ball, is on deck. He'd like to get a shot at Denbo right here in this inning. Top of the fourth. Valley ahead of Jasper, 3-1. Outfield deep, the pitch, fastball high, ball four. Second walk of the inning. Denbo's only given up two hits, and right here, Larry Pritchett, the head coach of Springs Valley, is going to take a walk to the mound and have a word with his right-hander who struggled with his control here. The winner of this game will be on into the center state next Saturday and will play either Seymour or New Albany. That is the uh, second game. The Rockport or South Spencer winner will take on the winner out of Mooresville in game one here next Saturday at 11 o'clock. Right now, the Wildcats are going to have to battle back if they're going to be there next Saturday. And here's Brian Seibert. Here's the pitch. Fouled it back. He had a good cut. One strike and nothing. Kruger at second base. Mark Hankey at first. Outfield deep. The 
one strike pitch curve check swing in there for a strike. Oh he's quickly ahead of Sibe. Nothing in two. Denbo ready to pitch curved him tapped it foul just got a piece of it. Threw on the breaking pitch that time and Cyber trying to guard the plate just reached out and got a piece of that pitch. Cats have only left one runner on base tonight up to this inning. The pitch by Denbo curve swung on popped up foul territory who's going to call catchers over there and he's got it the inning is over. Seibert fouls out to the catcher. And the Cats miss an opportunity here to pick up a run. No runs, no hits, no errors. They strand two. We're halfway through this game, and Springs Valley leading Jasper 3-1. to one. Looking to put a look. <laughs> bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be the bottom of the batting order for Springs Valley. Darren Kearns, Mark Hammond, and Robbie Denbo to face the new Jasper pitcher. Second baseman, Mark Henke. For Huffman, he went three complete innings, gave up three runs, a three-run home run to Brent Harrell in the third. He walked five, struck out six, threw a total of 66 pitches. So it'll be Mark Henke on the mound and Alex Timbers at second base for the Wildcats. We go to the bottom of the fourth championship game of the 1988 regional. Hanky completing his warm-up throws and he'll face his outset, the lower third of the valley order. Darren Kern steps up. He flies to left field first time up. So Mark Hanky is in the pitch now. That's a young Blackhawk team, so we're going to see most of these players around for a year or two. To go back through your scorebook that I and see when the last time you show Hanky at work. Swung on, grounded towards third. Chris Hanky's got it. Edge it. Oh. High throw and a sweep. Well, when the wheels come off, they come off. That one just got away from Chris. It started sailing. Weidinger came off of the bag and made the catch in foul territory and then tried to sweep tag the runners. He went by, but Kern speed it there, and that'll be an error on Chris. So for the third inning and four at bats now, Valley has its leadoff man on. Here's Mark Hammond, who struck out against Huffman, facing Mark Hankey for the first time. See if they might be running Kearns here. Oh, and now Mark Hankey throws it away down the right field line. Here's Kearns on his way to second. He'll be in there. He rounds the bag, but he'll hold on there. And that'll be another error. Hanky started against Heritage Hills, went six innings. That was on the 28th. 28th of May. Right. That was the uh, next to last game of the year. Right. So that Hammond was, now could drive in a run. Go that ahead. was the last game of the year. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was Saturday a Saturday game. Out. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's the pitch. It was scheduled to be the next to last. It was drained out. There's a pitch inside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. So Valley, boy, I tell you, that would be a big, big run out there for the Hawks to get in. The stretch and the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Robbie Denbo on deck. Cats battling for their lives here tonight. The 1-1 pitch, here it is. Curved him and we laid off of it. It stayed outside. Two balls, one strike. Kearns led off with a routine grounder to third. Chris Hankey up throwing, and the ball just sailed on him. And Weiniger unable to make the tag at first as the throw pulled him off the bag. And then on a pickoff attempt, Mark Hankey threw it by Weiniger. Here's the pitch. In too close. Ball three. Three balls, one strike. Time called. The base umpire, Mike Rust, is coming in. And I don't know what uh, is pointing up into the stands there somewhere. I don't know what uh, they're looking at up there, but whatever it is, 
says it's been corrected. I guess. Three balls, one strike. Hammond digs in at the plate. Swing and a miss. Hankey with a good fastball. Mark on the air has worked 46 innings. Four complete games, 2.73 ERA. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Inside ball four, he walked it. That's the sixth walk that Valley has gotten tonight, and the first off, Mark Hankey. This is the third time in four innings that Valley has gotten their first two men on, and you are flirting with disaster when you continue to do that. Oh, you are. Particularly when you're behind. Three to one ball game, and the Hawks threaten to expand their lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And trying to dethrone the defending champion Wildcats out of the regional title. So stretch, and here's the pitch. He bunts out on the, and Hankey <laughs> falls down, and everybody's going to be safe. Mark Hankey came in, tried to feel that high bouncing ball, that bunt. He slipped, and a ball rolls out behind the mound. Everybody's going to be safe, and then Bo's on with a base hit, and now the Cats are in a real jam here. Nothing going right right here for the Wildcats, and they've gotten themselves into their own stew, as it turns out, on a couple of errors and a walk. And now a bunt by Denbo back to the mound that Hanky was going to field, and as he reached up, his spikes gave way. He sat right down on the seat of his pants, and the ball rolled by the mound, and everybody's safe. Here is Parsons, who has walked and singled and scored a run. Bases jammed, and that'll mean the Wildcat infield will come in. Time call, Kruger steps out in front of the plate. Trouble brewing here at Rec Field for the Wildcats. Now the stretch, and the pitch to the left-handed hitter, strike at the outside corner. Parsons. Field in. Runners lead at every base. And here's the 0 1 pitch outside. One ball, one strike. Well, the way Denbo is pitching out, you can't afford to give him too many more. Now, Hanky ready. The 1 1 pitch. Too close. Two balls, one strike. the count and now Mark Hankey has got to come in with one and Parsons knows it and he'll be thinking fastball probably up there the stretch for the right hander the 2 1 pitch swing and a foul back he got a fastball and he was ripping at it Gus kicked it foul back onto the screen and it's a 2 2 cap Caps jumped off to a one nothing lead very quickly when Jason Albrand led the game off with a triple, came home on a hanky sacrifice fly, but since then, Denbo has really slammed the door on it. And the Hawks, meanwhile, got a three-run homer from Brent Harrell, and they get threatened to get more here. High ball three laid off of it. Now it's a full count. <laughs> Infield, drawn in, all the way around. Looks in for the side, has it. The pitch. High fly ball to center field. That may get the run home, I don't know. Dedrick makes the catch. Here's the tag. Here's the throw to the plate. The relay is in time. Got him. It goes eight to three to two. Winos relay to the plate to Kruger, and Blake had the plate blocked off up the third baseline. Dudry got off a good throw to the mound where Wino was over there. That was a must throw, and he came through with it. I mean, that was a shot to Kruger. Kruger was about three foot up the line. Boy, does that ease the situation somewhat. Tremendously. That may mean if they can get 
turns out of there. They were not going to be flirting with Harold coming up with two or three men on. Turns has walked and flied to love. Well, you make those good defensive plays, I tell you, they'll go a long way in helping you. Well, they can help you turn the big mo around. Here's the pitch. Low for a ball. One ball, no strike. Now the, the point is, let's take advantage of it. Parsons hits into a double play, center to first to catch. 8-3-2 it goes. Now they're two out with runners at first and second. Pitch is high outside, two balls, no strike. You can't turn around, though, and walk the base and load it again. Cats battling adversity from the word go here tonight. Trailing three to one, bottom of the fourth. The stretch by Mark. And here's the pitch. Popped up on the end, uh, behind the plate. That'll be easy for Kruger. He's back, he's got it. Boy, did they dodge a bullet that time. Valley with the bases loaded and nobody out, and they come up empty. In the inning, no runs, one hit, two errors, two left. After four, Springs Valley three, Jasper one. Jasper down by two. It's a 3-1 ball game. Springs Valley right now holding all the cards, and Dembo out on the mound for the ball. with WITZ Sports Director Bob Sivers and Al Pillsbury. And this is Al Pillsbury along with Bob Simmers to bring you tonight's championship game of the 1988 Jasper Regional Baseball as it'll be the Springs Valley Blackhawks with a 19-7 record going up against the Jasper Wildcats 21-10. Jasper into this championship by way of a 10-5 win this afternoon and Springs Valley 7-2 over Ligoti. We'll be back to take a look at those afternoon games right after this word from the pregame sponsor, the Computery. At a recreation field this afternoon, it was Jasper taking on Vincennes in the first game and coming away with a 10-5 victory. Jasper coming up with six big runs in the second inning and taking a quick early lead after Ben Seds had come up with one run in the top of the first inning to lead in the very early part of the ball game. It was a 6-1 after two innings, and after that, Jasper then put th uh, two runs on the board in the third inning, and one run each in the fifth and in the seventh to finally pull away to that 10-5 victory. For Ben Seds, they scored one in the first, as we said, took that early 1-0 lead. Then they scored two in the third, one of those a home run by Red Kiesler to lead off the third inning. And in the fourth inning, another run on a couple, or two runs on a couple of doubles and a walk as Ben Sands was trying to come back, but that was all they were able to get. One in the first, two in the third, and two in the fourth for their five runs. So the Cats coming up with a 10-5 to victory. And the Cats in the last uh, postseason games have scored a total of 40 runs in their four postseason games up to this point and have had 43 hits. So they've been making good use of the hits they have been getting. They've been counting the ball pretty well. For Springs Valley in this afternoon's game, we said one run in the first as they defeated Lagoti by a score of 7-1. to one. Springs Valley took a 1-0 lead and then shoved it up to 4 to nothing as they scored three runs in the fourth inning. And two runs in the sixth inning. Lagoti scored one in the sixth and one in the seventh. That final score, seven to two 
for the Springs Valley Blackhawks, and that brings them into the game tonight against the Jasper Wildcats for the championship of this regional tourney. Jasper going for the third consecutive regional championship. We'll be back with a look at the starting lineups and the start of tonight's game, but first, these messages. Well, Ben Franklin, of course, with all the kinds of things you need for summer, that spring adds a little bit uh, behind time. We're going to have to do something about that. Well, it's not uh, summer officially, you know. Well, weather-wise, it seems to be. So, starting lineups for these two teams, and here to give them to you, Bob Simmers. All right, you got to the 21st of June. To get oh, okay, so I'm still okay. <laughs> all right, leading off for Jasper, Jason Albrand at shortstop. Hitting second, third baseman Chris Hankey. Brett Weidinger batting third. He'll be at first base. Blake Kruger, the catcher in the cleanup spot. Hitting fifth for the Wildcats, left fielder Brad Albrand. Hitting sixth, second baseman Mark Hankey. And the number seven spot will be Brian Seibert, the D8. Hitting eighth will be John Lundkuller in right field. And Brad Dedrick will bat ninth, and he'll be in center field. And, of course, on the mound to start tonight will be Right-hander Steve Huffman with a record of five and three for Springs Valley now 19 and seven of the year after their seven and two went over Ligoti this afternoon. They'll lead it off with Mark Parsons in center. Drew Kearns will be the catcher and hit second. Batting third, right fielder Rick Freeman. Batting in the cleanup spot will be Brett Harrell, the shortstop. Tony Pritchett will bat fifth. He'll be at second base. Hitting in the number six spot will be Pat Huddleston. Had a couple of big hits for the Hawks today in that number nine spot, and he's been moved up now into the number six spot, and he'll DH for the first baseman, Ken Goodpaster. Batting seventh will be the left fielder, Darren Kearns. Batting eighth for Springs Valley, Mark Hammond at third base. And Robbie Denbo, with a record of 11-2, and two, will bat ninth. Denbo taking his warm-ups out there. He's completed them, and we're set for baseball. Jason Albrand started the day. Hitting 263. Jay had a double in three official at bats. Also had a walk and a sacrifice fly as he was up seven times. <laughs> make that uh, make that uh, five times he was up. Went up the bat a couple of times when he really didn't need to. <laughs> All right, as Denbo is ready. Swung on, fly ball, center field. Center fielder backing up, going back. It's over his head at the 370 mark. Aubrey around second on his way to third. He'll be in with a triple sliding safe. Boy, that ball carried on Parsons. He wasn't ready for that. Jay really rocked that one. And he kept backpedaling, backpedaling, instead of turning and going to the spot where it would have come down. That ball bounced right at the 370 mark, and Aubrey leads it off with a booming triple. Jay on the way again. Here's Chris Hankey. Chris had a big afternoon. He had a triple to drive in two runs and singled in another run. He also scored twice. Well, the Cats have a valley infield in right here at the outset. Low and away. Two balls, no strike. Parsons couldn't believe that. He just needed a move for a, about 10 seconds. The ball just kept carrying and carrying. Well, the twilight takes its toll on the opposition here. Outside ball three, the umpiring assignments tonight. Richard Watkins of Terre Haute behind home plate. Dan McGrath of third and Michael Rust of Newburgh at first base. Here's the pitch in there for a strike. It's three and one. Defensively, Hammond at third, Harrell at short, Pritchett at second. Good pastor at first and they're in all the way around. The stretch and a pitch to Hankey. Fly ball, right field. That should get the run home. The right fielder going back, 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 and makes the catch. Here's the tag, and the run will be home. And the Cats grab an early one to nothing lead. Chris gave out a good ride. The ball seems to be carrying well tonight, Al. Well, it does. That's the best we've seen it carry. It carried a little bit this afternoon, but uh, tonight it's really taken off. Chris Hankey gave it a long ride, and Freeman kept going deeper and deeper into the alley and when he made the catch he kind of went down on both knees all brands scored easily from third and it's a one to nothing game here's a guy that could make it carry yeah here's Weidegger and he looks at a strike Denbo 
Right hander has been hit for a run here. Swing and a miss. Wino had a good cut and a breaking ball. So Albrand triples over the center fielder's head and rides home on Chris Hankey's sacrifice fly to right. Check swing and they're asking for an appeal and I don't think they're going to get the call. Oh, he didn't go around. One ball, two strikes. He laid off of it right at the last minute, and the pitch was low inside. Cats score quickly. Denbow looks in. Now the one-two. Curve just missed. Two balls, two strikes. Cats continue their heavy hitting here in the tournament. The two-two pitch. Struck him out on a fastball that jammed him in on the fist. First strikeout by Robbie Denbo. Two gone in the inning. Here's Blake Kruger. Blake drove in three runs today with a double, a single, and a fielder's choice. As he was two for five against Ben Sims. The pitch. Ground ball sharply to short. Harold digs it out. He'll throw to first. In time, and the first inning is over. Kruger rolls out to the shortstop. Brent Harold in the inning. One run, one hit. No errors, none left. Half inning over with. Jasper one. Valley coming up. To everyone interested in. One run in the top of the first inning and lead it one to nothing. A long triple to lead the game off and then a sacrifice fly. And that's it. One run on one hit. It'll be Mark Parsons, Drew Kearns, and Rick Freeman leading things off for Valley as they come to bat in the bottom of the first. Steve Huffman on the mound for the Wildcats in this championship game. Parsons hitting 270, Drew Kearns 350. Kearns only a freshman, and Rick Freeman hitting 300 as they come into this ball game. Huffman out on the mound, still taking his warm-up, and the Cats. Take advantage and come up with one run to take an early lead. They have used the big inning in these tournament games in the sectional as well as in the first game. Four runs in the first inning against Dubois in the sectional, and they held on to defeat the Northeast Dubois. And then a big six run in first inning against Pike Central. And they held on to win that one. And this afternoon, a six-run second inning put them out in the driver's seat. And right now, one run in the top of the first. And Valley will be sending up the leadoff batter, Mark Parsons. All right, here's Parsons, a left-handed batter. And Huffman's first pitch to him is swung on and missed. If Huffman is on, staying around the plate low, he'll be hard to hit. Parsons started the day hitting 270. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one low into the dirt. One ball, one strike. Oh, Brown was flying around the bases on that triple. That ball just kept carrying to the deepest part of the outfield. Here's Huffy's 1-1 delivery. Fastball misses low inside. Two balls, one strike. Parsons walked three times in that one over Ligoti. Uh, he did the job for a leadoff, man. Now the 2-1 pitch. Here it is. Low inside. Three balls, one strike. Kruger steps out in front of the plate. Parsons, Drew Kearns, and then Rick Freeman. In the bottom of the first inning, Valley down. One to nothing. 3-1 pitch on the way. Here it is. Fastball high. Parsons is aboard. First walk by Huffman. And it will bring up Drew Kearns, the catcher. Cats played airless baseball. And at 10 to 5 went over Vincennes. That was the first airless game they had played in about 12 or 13 outings. Runner leaves at first. Huffman the pitch. Strike at the outside corner. Huffman has worked 51 and two-thirds innings coming into tonight's action, and he has the lowest ERA on the Wildcat pitching staff, 1.50. 
This is his tenth start of the year. The pitch, high, one ball, one strike. In those 51 plus innings, Huffman has allowed only 40 hits. He struck out 54, walked 36. Thrown one wild pitch, and he's been charged with five balks this year. Those came mainly early in the year. There's a strike, a fastball, sawed off the outer edge of the plate. Outfield. Brad Albrand in left, Brad Dedrick in center, John Lundkiller in right straight away. The one-two pitch. Just missed. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at first, Parsons. He represents the tying run. Cats wasted a little time getting on the scoreboard as Albrand led the game off of a triple and came home on Chris Hankey's deep fly to right. There's a 2-2 pitch. Just missed, low and away. Huffman won of the corner that time. Did I get the call from the home plate umpire? Full count. Pretty good crowd on here again tonight. Oh, there is. The stretch. Runner not going. And it's low outside. Ball four. Look out now. Two straight walks. That is not a good way to start off an inning as Rick Freeman now getting ready to come up. Well, Bishop had problems this afternoon, so he managed to get through the full seven innings, <laughs> making it interesting. And now Huffman walking the first two hitters he faced tonight. Jason Albrand from shortstop and Brett Weininger from first coming in on the mound to give some words of encouragement to Huffman now who has walked Parsons and Kearns. And the Hawks now have the tying run in scoring position, and it'll bring up right fielder Rick Freeman. Freeman is a 300 hitter. And another tough cookie to follow, Brent Harrell, the cleanup batter. The pitch to Whale of the game this afternoon. Here's the pitch, squares to punt, and he punts it foul back on the screen. One strike and nothing on Freeman. The winner of tonight's game will take on either, let's see, Seymour is in that final over there, and New Albany. Seymour bombed Silver Creek today, 15 to 1. New Albany. One its game, two to nothing. There's the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss at a good hard one. Nothing and two to Freeman. The lights just beginning to take their effect here at the ballpark. Chris Hankey at third, Jay Albrand at short, Mark Hankey at second, Weiniger the first baseman. And now the 0-2 pitch from Steve Huffman. Here it is. He wastes one outside. One ball, two strikes. Kruger set the target up outside that time, and that's where Huffman's pitch was. Freeman, left-handed hitter, with a one ball, two strike count on him. Runners lead at first and second base. Here's the one-two pitch from Huffy. He got him swinging. Freeman went out for a pitch that was outside and a little bit high, and Huffman got his first strikeout. That'll bring up Red Harrell. Harrell, a 400 hitter. Cats try for their 22nd one of the year and their 10th regional championship. One out, two on. Harrell steps in now as Huffman comes to the plate. The pitch is up a little high. One ball, no strikes. One to nothing, Cats, but Valley threatening here in the bottom half of the first inning. Steve stares in the Blake Kruger for the side. Now the big right-hander at the belt and the 1-0 pitch. Here it is. Inside. Snap throw to first. They almost had him. Weininger couldn't handle the throw down there, though. And Kearns just got back to the bag in time. But Kruger had another one down there. Close. Two and nothing to Harrell. Harrell will be looking for fastball here. Now the stretch by Steve and the 2-0 pitch. High and tight. Three balls, no strikes. Kruger again stepping out in front of the plate. Three balls, two strikes. No, three balls, no strikes, rather. And two men on. 
Now the 3-0 pitch. Here it is. Strike at the outside corner. Harold thought the ball was low outside. Kruger again looked like he was going to come up throwing, but Weiniger was playing well behind the back. Not holding the runner on. The 3-1 pitch. Strike two. Now it's a full count. Larry Pritchett coaching up third. Tony Whittaker down at first. Austin had a good year. Now Huffman at the belt. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Struck him out on a high hardwood. Huffman came back to fan a very dangerous hitter. Well, he's evened it up. He walked the first two, struck out the last two, and now he's got Troy Pritchett, 290 hitter. Get out of there. Pritchett, a left-handed hitter. See what he did in that second game today. Walked with the bases loaded and had another RBI with a sacrifice fly. Well, he had a productive afternoon, although he had no hits to show for it. He did get home a couple of runs. Swing and a miss and a ball up around the letters. No balls, one strike. Cats lead one to nothing. Uh, a sacrifice fly off the bat of Chris Hankey that drove in Jason Albrand, who had tripled. There's a fastball away. One ball, one strike. Parsons led the inning off by walking. Kearns then walked. Freeman struck out. Harrell worked the count to 3-0, and and then Huffman came back and fanned him. There's the 1-1 now on the way. Looked out up under his chin, and Pritchett just got out of the way in time. That'll keep him loose. Two balls, one strike. Huffman may be just wild enough to... He has he's good. loose up there. He's got good velocity tonight, but... 2-1 pitch, here it is. He had a cut and he missed. Two balls, two strikes. On deck, Pat Huddleston. He was a good hitter. He had two hits for Valley today and also a walk. 2-2 delivery on the way. Here it is. High, full count. Three balls, two strikes. The runners will be off of the pitch here. Anything in the alleys could be a couple of runs. 3-2 count. Runners go. The pitch. Inside ball four. The bases are jammed. Third walk of the inning. I'll bring up the D.H. Pat Huddleston. Huddleston batting 3.30 as he steps in there. <laughs> Again, Weininger and Albrand come to the mound to have a word with Steve Huffman. Going to be one of those nights, a walk out or a strike, a walk or a strike out. <laughs> we could be awful interesting. Been a long first inning. Huffman ready to work on Huddleston. Here's the pitch. Strike. Fastball in at the knees. So Huffman quickly gets out in front of Pat Huddleston, the DH. He's DHing for the first baseman, Kenny Goodpass. <laughs> 28 pitches so far for Huffman here in the first inning. Bases jammed in the bottom of the first. Here's the 0-1 pitch. End of the dirt. Good stop by Kruger. One ball, one strike. Huffman went three and one on Parsons and walked him, went three and two on Kearns and walked him, went three and two on Harold, struck him out, three and two on Pritchett and walked him. There's a one-one pitch. That is up high. Well, uh, Lagodi, starting pitcher, walked four batters in the first inning, and Valley got its run without taking the bat off its collective shoulder, and Huffman now is falling behind Huddleston here, two and one with the bases jammed. Big right hand here ready. The 2 1 pitch. Outside. Snap throw to first. And the runner got him. He got him. Pritchett is picked off at first base. 13 pickoffs this year by Kruger. And the inning abruptly comes to a halt. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. Two men left on base. After one, the 1 0 catch. Hello, Arthur. Hard day at the office. Oh. Top the second inning and the Colts close play at first base to close out that inning as Troy Pritchett thrown out by 
Jasper catcher, Blake Kruger. But it'll be Brad Albrand, Mark Hankey, and Brian Seibert leading things off for the Cats here at the top of the second inning. As Valley was threatening in the bottom of the first, had bases loaded. And three walks by Steve Huffman. Here's Brad Albrand. Left-handed hitting left fielder, and the first pitch from Denbo, I think it slipped out of his hand, came in high. Brad today had uh, one hit in three official at-bats, and they walked him twice intentionally. There's a pitch that misses, two balls, no strikes. Denbo with a glossy 11-2 record this year. He and Brad Harrell, who's playing shortstop tonight, have all of their wins. Here's the 2-0 delivery. Fouled off the left side over the Blackhawk dugout. Two balls, one strike. One thing about Brad, he does not overswing at a plate. He's just a good contact hitter up there. All you need to do is get that bat on the ball. It'll go somewhere. Pokes it here, pokes it there, goes the opposite way. There's a 2-1 pitch. Popped up on the infield. Is calling shortstop Brent Harrell on the grass. Makes the catch, and all Brad is gone. Brad Albrand pops out to the Valley shortstop, Brent Harrell, and here now is Mark Hankey. Mark had a base hit and a big six-run inning. He was one for four in the Alice's game, struck out. Also, he struck out twice, lined out, and then walked one time. Breaking ball from Harrell is up high, one ball, no strikes. Cats lead it one nothing when the Cats are batting in the top of the second inning. Now the 1 0 pitch. That is inside. Two balls, no strikes. Denbo just missed the inside corner with that one. Right hander ready, the 2 0 pitch. Ground ball in the hole, a base hit. Mark Hankey singles sharply to left. That's have their second hit of the night, and will bring up Brian Seibert. Brian today was one for three. Single struck out and popped out and sacrificed and walked. He is nine for 13 in the state tournament. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul back. He had a good cut at a ball up around the letters. No balls, one strike. Runner at first with one gun. That's Mark Hankey, just single. Goes stretched by Denbo. Now he steps off of the rubber. No throw over to first base. Gats would like to pick up a couple more. Here's a pitch into the dirt. Good stop by Drew Kearns, the catcher. Say he's a freshman now. He's a freshman. Uh, There's about four freshmen. Well, oh, they've had a great year. It's the second uh, young ball club we've seen in the area. The one-one pitch, bouncing ball to Harold. It's short. He'll go to second for one. Here's a relay to first. Double play. They turn it. Six forty-three and out. No runs. One hit. No errors. Nobody left. Bottom of the second coming up. Jasper leads it one to nothing. If you have a meeting coming up and don't know where to head. Bottom of the second inning, the Blackhawks will send up Pat Huddleton, who was up to bat when Pritchett got thrown out at first by Blake Kruger. And Aaron Kearns and Mark Hammond, should any of those get on? Robbie Denbo, the number nine hitter for the Blackhawks, will face Steve Huffman. Huddleton, as we said, a uh, couple of hits this afternoon, and he was up there, as Al pointed out. When Pritchett got nailed at first base, swings and misses on Huffman's first pitch, a fastball. One strike and nothing. Curve outside. One and one. Huffman walked three, struck out two in that first inning. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Overhand fastball, that stays down. Two balls, one strike. 
Bishop was missing up high for the most part this afternoon. Huffman predominantly has been missing low and away. Here's a 2-1 pitch. That is low and away. Three balls, one strike. Huffman walked the first two batters in the first inning. And he's right now 3-1 and one on Pat Hulson leading off this second inning. Big right-hander ready. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Strike at the outside corner at the knees. So for the umpteenth time now, a full count. <laughs> Three two pitch, here it is. He blew the fastball by him. Huddleston goes down swinging. Now he struck out the freaking walk three. That'll bring up Darren Kearns, the left fielder. That was uh, Pike Central with the other team now that I was thinking about that had a lot of freshmen and sophomores on their team. Yeah. Princeton down at, uh, well, Princeton with Monty, they've got a lot of young kids on their ball club. Here's Darren Kearns, left-handed hitting left fielder. The pitch to him is swung on, fly ball left field. Brad Albrand coming over toward the line, should make the play, and he does. Kearns flies out on the first pitch. Left. That'll bring up Mark Hammond, the third baseman. Hammond hits 212 on the year. Hammond was 0 for 3 plus a walk in that afternoon victory over Ligoti. Outfield straight away, two outs now as the first pitch sails high to Hammond. One ball, no strikes. Oh, it's been a great day for baseball weather-wise. You know, we couldn't have asked for anything better. That was the 1-0 pitch now. Swing and a miss. Good fastball by Huffman. As you pointed out, Al, he does have the velocity tonight. Oh, if he could find it, really get that uh, control fine-tuned, he would be tough to hit here tonight, I think. Yeah, he's keeping the ball down low, which is, if you're going to miss, that's all right. 1-1. One, one. In for a strike of the knees at the inside corner. Here's his pitch. Just oh. missed. Huffman had taken a couple of steps for the dugout at first. Thought he had that one. Yeah, he thought he slipped the third strike by him, but he didn't get the call, and it's two balls, two strikes. Flags atop the center field flagpole just hanging straight down. 2-2 two -two pitch. Just missed. Three balls, two strikes. Robbie Denbo, the pitcher, the on-deck hitter. <laughs> That's five hitters now that Huffman has gone full on. Five of the eight he's faced so far. There's the 3 2 pitch. Stuck him out swinging. So it's an easy one, two, three inning. Nothing across for Valley. Jasper's third inning coming up. Cats lead it one nothing. The prescription. You think it's still a one nothing ball game. The Cats have one run on one hit. And they'll send up here in the top of the third. John Lemkuler, number eight batter. And Brad Dedrick, and then followed by leadoff man Jason Albrand. Here's Lemmy. Ground ball toward third. Third baseman's got it on the grass. Here's Hammond's throw, and it is inside. Lemkuler taps the third. One pitch, one out. Here's Brad Dedrick. Dedrick started the day at 260. Had a couple of key hits in that Wildcat victory. He was two for three plus a walk. Drove in a couple of runs. High pop on the infield. Foul territory. Good pass there in foul ground. Makes the catch. Two pitches, two outs. That'll bring up Jason Albrand, who tripled and scored the game's only run. Came home on Chris Hankey's sack fly. <laughs> Noisy Valley crowd off to our left. John Lemkuller and Brad Dedrick, the eight and nine men in the order, and then the leadoff man, Jason Albrand. Lemkuller grounded the third, his only time up. That was took a perfect play there with the bases loaded, and Dedrick made the catch. Swing and a miss, one and one. Dedrick's throw to the 
the mound was right on the money to the cutoff man. Brad Weininger, he wheeled and fired the perfect throw to the plate, and they nailed the runner trying to score after the catch. Low and away, two balls, one strike. Dallas starts swinging the bats here. Now well, Denbo has been in complete charge since the first inning. He gave up a triple and a sacrifice fly, and since then he's been able to control the cat. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. A center fielder, Mark Parsons, plays as deep as any opposing center fielder we've seen. He plays everybody deep. Yes, uh, here's the 2-2 pitch. Low for a ball, three and two. I guess after that <laughs> leadoff triple got over his head, he says, hey, I can come in on a ball. And I'm not going to let another one get behind me. Three-two pitch, struck him out. Lemkiller fans. That's only the second strikeout for Denbo tonight. But his defense behind him has played flawlessly. One gun, here's Dedrick. This game is just a little over an hour old, and we're already in the top of the fifth. Here's a punt to the right side of the mound. Denbo feels and throws and tied to God. Dedrick trying to punt his way on. Got a little too close to the mound. He had the right idea, but he pushed it up the first baseline just a little more. He might have had a chance to beat it out. Dedrick's out, one to three. Here's Jay Aldrand. Wildcats can't get anything started here tonight. See if Jay can come up with his second hit. He's one for one. He's tripled and scored, walked and stole a base. First pitch to him is too tight, too tight at the letters for a one ball count. There's a strike in there. One ball, one strike. Denbo sailing along here with a two-run lead, three to one. Right-hander ready, the one-one pitch. That's too tight. Two balls, one strike. Gant's got a run to the first to lead 1-0, but Harold's three-run homer put him ahead. Half foul down the third baseline, and Terry Gilbert feels it in the coaching box. Takes a look at a baseball and then flips it out to the mound. For Caps, whose bats have been booming through the first four games of the tournament, have been pretty silent for the most part tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch into the dirt, and it's a full count now. Three balls, two strikes. Now Denbo's kept him guessing, and... So far, he's been able to outguess him. Good pitching performance out there. There's a 3-2. Swing and a tap foul. Count will hold the three balls, two strikes to Jason. Well, we need to get a couple of base runners on. They don't get a long one. Swung on a ground ball, just foul, just outside the bag at third. Jay just turned on it a little too quick. That was ticketed for a double into the bullpen. Ball just went by the bag about six inches foul. So once again, Denbo will have to work three and two on the hitter. have only stranded three runners, so they haven't had a whole lot of activity on the base pass tonight. Denbo has walked three, struck out two, giving up just two hits. Curve outside, ball four. <laughs> Denbo started toward the dugout, and so had the catcher. They were trying to help the umpire, but it didn't work. And Denbo's issued his fourth walk. Woo! Oh, that did not miss by much, folks. Oops. Brand was about as confident as ball four. He immediately headed towards first base, and the pitcher and catcher headed toward the dugout of third. Here's Chris Hankey. Chris has a couple of homers and nine doubles on the year. Brand <laughs> diving back in at first. No throw over there. This time there is a throw. Chris got his first triple of the year, and that went over Vincennes. Here's the pitch, swing and a foul, he had a good cut. One strike and nothing. Cats down by a couple here in the top of the fifth. Oh, these games go quick out when you're behind. 
They do. This is the 0 1 pitch. Strike. That ball in at the letters, and Chris is in the hole. Nothing in two. Now they have to be up there protecting the plate. Benbo, for the most part, when he's gotten ahead of the hitter, nothing in two. He's fed him a pretty steady diet of breaking stuff, and he does here. Got him swinging. Chris Hankey goes after a curveball and fans on three pitches. Third strikeout for Denbo in the inning. The Cats get no runs, no hits, no errors. They leave a runner. Four and a half complete. And the Wildcats on the short end of a 3-1 count of Springs Alley. Time now for our Fiesta trivia question. Now, the Cardinal fans want to listen up to this one. Our winner tonight will get a free medium pizza for the guys down at Fiesta. First caller. The Terry Crowell was the correct answer. The 482-2131 will win that free medium pizza. And our question is, five St. Louis Cardinals have had their numbers retired. Four of them are Stan Musial, Dizzy Dean, Lou Brock, and Bob Gibson. Our question is, who is the fifth Cardinal to have his number retired? The St. Louis Cardinals have had five players with their numbers retired. Four of them, Stan Musial, Dizzy Dean, Lou Brock, Bob Gibson. Who's the fifth? First caller to 482-2131 will win that medium pizza now this. Got a hit on the infielder. You hit one over the mound. Jason Albrand got off a good throw. Weininger a good stretch for the umpire said Freeman beat the throw there. Terry Gilbert. Popped out of the dugout and shattered something out of the first base umpire, but it'll stand as an infield hit. That's the fourth hit for Valley. They've out hit the Wildcats four to two. And here's Brent Harrell in. It's been this guy's done all the damage at the plate tonight with a three-run homer. That's been the difference in this ball game right here. Harrell pitched a beautiful game to pick up the victory over Ligoti to go eight and zero on the year. And tonight, he's done it with his bat. There's a curve in for a strike. Harold today had a double and a single and drove in a run and was walked twice, so he's working on a good day at the plate. Here's the pitch. Strike, another fastball in there. Harold points to the outside of the plate and tells the umpire that, now nah, that didn't hit the corner, but... He's in the hole, nonetheless. Nothing in two. Runner at first leads. Nobody out the pitch. Fly by left field. Brad Albrand will get this one, though. He's there, and he's got it. Pillsbury, did you think that was gone? That, no, looked, like, that looked like it was gone. Mm -hmm. No. I knew that was going to stay in the park. Harold lines one hard, but out to left field. Here's Pritchett, who's walked twice. One. Valley, bottom of the fifth. Looking ahead of the cat six, Weiniger, Kruger, Brand all brand. Anybody gets on, Mark Hankey. The pitch. In for a strike. One strike and nothing on Pritchett. This game moving right along. Runner at first leads. Hankey checks him over the shoulder. The pitch stays far outside. One ball, one strike. Cats have been out hit 4-2 and trail 3-1. Cats have committed the only errors, too. As it turned out, it didn't cost them. Only by... There's a bouncing ball to Simmers at second. He tags the runner and throws the first double play. Alex Simmers with a heads-up play at second base. Field of that ball. Tagged the runner and flipped on to first. And that'll end the inning. Pritchett hits into a 4-3 Quinn killing. No runs, a hit, no errors, none left. Six coming up, and the Cats need two to tie. They trail 3-1. Seventh, or sixth inning. Weiniger leads it off. Swung on, fly ball, left field, down the line. The left fielder giving a long chase, and it'll fall in foul territory. Boy, the left fielder was playing way over into left center, and he had a long way to run. Darren Kearns gave it a valiant effort, but the ball just dropped out of his reach into the Valley bullpen. Weiniger was almost to second base now, cuts to the middle of the diamond and heads back toward home plate. No balls, one strike. 
bats have not had a hit since the second inning when Mark Hankey singled with one out. He was then erased in an inning-ending double play. Benbow rocks and fires, curves him and stays up high. One ball, one strike. Outfield deep, swung around to the right. Now the pitch, here it is. Works him away and down low. Two balls, one strike. They're not giving Weininger. In fact, Weininger really hasn't had a whole lot of pitches to hit in the entire tournament. Uh, work carefully to him. This one is too tight. Three balls, one strike. Well, you need base runners. Any old way to get on there, Wino. 3-1 pitch. Outside, he had a notion but laid off at the last minute. And that's the fifth walk given up by Denbo. Normally, now, through the course of the year, any team that walks five Wildcats, they're asking for trouble. But Denbo has been able to, to get out of any uh, jams that he's been in. The Wildcats have only left four men on base. But well, he's been doing it after there's been two outs a lot of times. Yeah. Here's Kruger. Line drive in a right center field, too high though. The right fielder is over and makes the catch, and Weininger scurries back to first. Kruger flies to Freeman and right. Cats are down to their final five outs here, folks. And here's Brad Albrand, who's drawn the collar tonight, 0 for 2, popped a short, bounced out to the first baseman who made a tremendous play, and then Robbie Denbo hustling over, covered the bag to get Brad Albrand. A good play by a good passer at first. Here's the pitch, and it's in there for a strike call. Denbo continues to keep that ball down low. I tell you, Cats don't get something going here. They won't get the top of the order up again. Here's a pitch, and it's in too tight. One ball, one strike. Outfield. Swung around to the left, right and deep. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Low inside. Two balls, one strike. Third baseman Mark Hammond is in a step on the edge of the grass. We're in the sixth, and the Cats down 3-1. to Carroll, three-run homer, the difference. Fastball missing away. Three balls, one strike. Mark Hankey on deck. Three balls, one strike, the stretch, and here's the pitch. Line drive down the left field line. That's going to be down the line for extra bases. Here's the runner rounding second on his way to third. They're going to wave him home. Here's the throw out of the bullpen. Double, run home. Brad Albrand doubles into the left field corner. That scored Weininger all the way from first. And a tying run in scoring position now. Brad, I like the way he goes to the pitch, Al. He doesn't overswing, as I said earlier. He just makes contact, and he drilled that down the left field line. Fair, it's spun deep into the corner. Here's Mark Hankey now. Now it's critical to get the uh -huh. in from second. It's super critical right here. The pitch to Mark. It's high for a ball. One ball, no strike. Denbo is asking where it was, and uh, the umpire says, well, he was indicating, was it high? And he said, yes, right here, uh, I think we possibly are going to have a pinch runner. I think so, yes, for Brad Albrand. Good move by Coach Gilbert. Trying to get some additional speed out there at second. That's a big run out there. And it's going to be Mark Wigan coming out of the dugout for the Wildcats. Talk we had with Gobert after the Vincennes game, I think, out. <laughs> and I know his dad bought a little radio along tonight, Coach Gobert's dad did. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, he said they get on you sometimes, son, but he says everything they say is true up there in the press box. <laughs> I'm glad somebody believes us. <laughs> so Wigan is on to pinch run. Here's Mark Hankey, a single and walk. And there's a one ball, no strike count on him. Oh, a base hit we needed here. Line drive out over uh, the second baseman goes back and makes the catch. That wasn't hit nearly as hard as I thought it was when it came off of the bat. A little hump back liner as the second baseman Fritz just went back a couple of steps and made the catch. Two men out. Here is Brian Seibert. 
He's hit into a double play and fouled out to the catcher. 0 for 2. The pitch to him. Ground ball by the third, but foul. Ooh. Terry Gilbert chastising Wigan out there a little bit. He's not running. With two out, he should be going on everything. Cats have been out, hit 4-3. Three. They trail 3-2. Three to two. One strike to count on Brian Seibert. Denbo's been the first pitcher in the tournament that's been able to shut Sibe out so far. The stretch, the 0-1. Ground ball to the third baseman. That ought to be easy. Here's a throw to first. It is in time, and the inning is over. Seibert grounds out third to first, but the Cats pick up one run on one hit. No errors. They leave a runner. They have stranded five. Bottom of the sixth coming up. Valley leads it 3-2. Looking Back at Recreation Field, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and it'll be Pat Huddleston, Darren Kearns, and Mark Hammond, should any of those get on. The number nine hitter, Robbie Denbo. Well, the big blow of this ball game so far has been Brent Harrell's three-run homer. Back in the third inning, and otherwise, the Hawks have not Oh, he's hit by a pitch. Not a good way to start an inning. One, two, three, four, five of the six innings. Valley's had its leadoff man aboard. The Hawks missed an opportunity to really put the crunch on the Cats there in the fourth inning when they had the bags loaded and nobody out. And Parsons hit into a fly ball double play that went center to Weiniger on the cutoff man to the catcher Blake Kruger. They're checking Huddleston out of first base. That's beginning to feel the sting of that pitch. He says he's all right, though. Cats, uh, yeah, when you're up uh, in a good ball game like this, it doesn't hurt near as much. Here's Darren Kearns. He fly to left and reached on an error. The stretch. The pitch. Ground ball to short. Might be two. Aubrey's got it. On the simmers, they get the force out. No relay. Turns it into a fielder's choice. The out goes six to four. And Mark Hammond steps up now. Hammond is struck out and walked. Looking ahead to the Wildcats, seventh inning. It'll be Lynn Cooler, Dedrick, Jay Albrand. Anybody gets on? Chris Hankey. The Cats will have to get somebody on if they're going to pull this one out. Speedy ball game here. And... A tight one. Here's the pitch. Outside, Cougar had to lean out. Hammond struck out on the second, walked in the fourth. One ball count on him. Huddleston at first. He let off, uh, rather, uh, Kearns at first. Huddleston was a race for that fourth play. High, two balls, no strike. Checks the runner and the stretch and a pitch. Swing and a miss. Hammond had a vicious cut at that one. Hammond on the air batted 212. Outfield straight away. Runner at first. Kearns leads. The pitch. Swing and a miss. 2-2 Two -two count now on the Mark Hammond. lead 3-2 in the bottom of the sixth. They're trying to pick up that run that the Wildcats got back in the top half of this inning. Curved him and he just got a piece of it fouling it high off the screen. Still a two ball two strike count on him and Robbie Denbo would be next. He's had a not only a good night on the mound but he's walked and scored ahead of uh, Harrell's three run over and he singled his last time up when he bunted and the ball hopped over the mound. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Hammond goes down swinging. Well, Hanky is first strikeout. Here's Denbo. Well, you definitely want to get this guy. All right, then take your chances in the seventh with Lemmy, Dedrick, and Jay Albrand. 
Runner at first leads away. Hankey comes to the plate, low outside. One ball, no strikes. Mark Parsons, the top of the order, waits on deck. Now the 1-0 delivery, here it is. Ooh, fastball, just barely missed. Two balls, no strikes. Well, he fell behind Hammond to nothing before coming back to fan him. Ben Bull, right-handed batter, grips that bat right down on the knob. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Curve, that's a beauty in there for a strike. 2-1 the count on the Robbie Denbo. He's tied for his 12th pitching one of the year. The stretch and the 2-1 pitch, here it is. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. Big man to get out of there and go to the seventh. There's the 2-2 pitch. Fly ball down a right field line, twisting off in a foul territory, and that's going to be up into the big oak tree out there. 2-2, count holding on Robbie Denbo. Mark Parsons is up there. He's the guy that ended that bases loaded double play on a fly ball to medium center field. That both Dedrick and Weininger made perfect throws and Kruger slapped the tag on a runner coming in from third. That's a big run right now. Strike three call. He caught him looking on the outside corner. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. One left. The Hawks have stranded six. We go to the seventh. Cats need a run to tie. They trail 3-2. It'll be John Munkuler, Brad Dedrick, and Jason Albrand. And the Cats need another one of their seven innings come from behind. Sir. A pitch. Swing and a miss by Lemkiller. Lemkiller is grounded to third and struck out. He's 0 for 2. That was the 0 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. He went after one low and away. Two strike count on Lemmy. The pitch. Bouncing ball towards third. Third baseman backs up on it. Bare hands. Here's a throw to first. Wild throw down the right field line. Lim Cooter digging for second base. He'll round second. He'll hold on there. And the Cats have the tying run at second. After Denbo got Lim Cooter in an 0-2 hole, Lemmy reached out and tapped the ball to Hammond. Hammond made a good pickup, a bare hand pickup right near the bag. The ball kind of took a little tricky hop on him. And then his throw sailed wide. That'll be a two-base error on the third baseman. Good throw would have been there, but it sailed way over good passer's head and carried down the fence into the close to the bullpen area. And Lemkuler gets all the way to second base. And let's see now what Terry Gobert's going to do here. A little conference on the mound as Larry Pritchett has gone that way. Now he's headed back to the dugout. So the Hawks commit an error. And it opens the door here for the Wildcats and gives them an opportunity to tie this ball game up. Cedric has fouled out to the first baseman and trying to bunt his way on, grounded out to the pitcher. Let's see if Terry Gobert might be trying to perhaps Bunt the runner to third where a fly ball could get him in. Third baseman will play even with a bag. Now the Wildcats uh, being told by the umpires to move into the dugout. A stretch, the pitch to Dedrick. He squared the bunt, the pitch tailed outside. One ball, no strikes. So the Cats have some breath of life there in the seventh. The pitch, Dedrick plays a beauty down the first base side. Nobody overcovering, and everybody's going to be safe. Dedrick beats it out. The second baseman wasn't over there. Tony Pritchett didn't cover as the first baseman was also charging, and it's winners at first and third here in the seventh. Dedrick laid down a beauty up the right side, Al. He put that down right where you want to put it. The first baseman coming in, the pitcher coming in, the second baseman just standing his ground did not come over to cover first. 
Now we need a long fly ball, and the limb cooler is going to be lifted for a pinch runner here. It's going to be Hurst. It's going to be Todd Hurst. Hurst in the run for Lemmy. The Cats have made it to the championship game of the regional on 12 occasions, and they've won nine of them. So they stand nine and three in regional title games. Lem Cooler gives Jason Albrand a high five as he heads into the dugout. Todd Hurst to third with a tying run. The Valley infield will be playing it in. Dedrick the runner at first. I wonder if they might try to send him. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. Nobody. Go ahead. Nobody out. Runners on the corners. Here's Jason Albrand. Well, they're going to play in. The infield. Albrand, perfect night. Triple scored. Walked and stole. There goes Dedrick. And there'll be no throw. He'll go into second base. Now the Cats have the go-ahead run in scoring position. Dedrick steals second base. No throw down there. They won't even get a challenge it. Here's Jason Albrand. Now we need that boomer. The pitch to him. There's a fly ball to left. Will that get the run home? The left fielder coming on. Hurst will tag. There's the catch, and they won't uh, send the runner home. The throw comes in to the cutoff, man. And the uh, ball just wasn't hit deep enough. One man out. Here's Chris Hankey. Chris got a run home with a long fly ball back in the first. We need another one off of you, Chris. Well, the Hawks opened the doors here for the Wildcats as Lemkuller reached on a two-base there. Then Dedrick beat out a bunt. Runners at first and third. All brand fly to left. Here's Chris Hankey. Swing and a foul back. He had a good cut. Zembo battling the Wildcats here. He's pitched the masterpiece type of game you like to see is a championship game. It's been close all the way through. Cats took a 1-0 lead and then Spring Valley on a three-run home run took a 3-1 lead. The Cats fighting back right now. The 0-1 curved him and it's outside. One ball, one strike. Good job by Drew Kearns behind home plate. That ball was breaking away sharply for the right-handed batter. And he had to go down on one knee to dig it out of the dirt. Infield in. The 1-1 pitch. Outside. Two balls, one strike. Brett Weiniger on deck. Chris Hankey digs in at the plate. Denbo with a 2-1 count. Here's the pitch, and it almost hit him. Hankey just got out of the way in time. Three balls, one strike. One out. Runners at second and third. 3-2 Valley lead. Seventh inning. The 3-1 pitch. There's a fly ball to center. That'll get the run home. Center fielder Parsons there. He makes the catch. Here comes Hurst toward the plate. And the throw cut off. The relay not in time. Chris Hankey ties the ball game with a fly ball to center. Uh, that's hitting in the clutch, I tell you. Two now, we, now we need to pick up that run at second. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't want Weidegger intentionally right here. They've done it before today. Not Valley, but Weidegger, they pitched carefully to him, and Denbo's walked in twice. That run is an unearned run, but it's a run, folks. Outfield, around to the right and deep. Here's Wino. The stretch, the pitch. High for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Kruger would be next if Weidegger gets the board. Chris Hankey drives in the tying rod. Todd Hurst from third. Here's the pitch. Check swing. Low outside. Two balls, no strikes. Wanted to go after that one. So the Cats to battle back to tie it here. Oh, they need a run to go up here. There's a pitch up high. And then Denbo working very carefully to Wadiger. No, well, Brent Harrell can come back in if Valley needs to use him. He still has three innings. That's right. Denbo has pitched well, though. Here's the pitch. Weiniger looks at it outside, ball four. So they'll leave it up to Kruger. 
That is the sixth walk given up by Denbo. Kruger's been shut down tonight, and now would be a good time to come out of it. What is this? Good question. Apparently, uh, the count was wrong. They say it's only ball three and out. I got three and oh. Weininger is still in there. Here's the pitch in there for a strike. Three balls and a strike. You had the count three and oh. I had it three and oh. Well, must be right then. Here's the pitch. There's ball four. Weininger walks. That is the sixth walk now given. And here is Blake Kruger. He's been a clutch hitter for the Wildcats year long. He has driven in 29 runs. That's tops on the Wildcats staff. And he has cut through in the clutch several times. He does not have a hit yet tonight. The pitch to him. Strike at the outside corner, knee high. Three, three, tied, top of the seventh. The Valley will send up the top of the order in their half of the seventh inning. There's the stretch and the 0-1 pitch. Curve in there for a strike. Kruger's in the hole now. Nothing at two. You know, a... Took advantage of it. Managed to at least tie this ball game up. Now the 0-2 pitch, here it is, struck him out. Cats stay alive, Denbo gets out of it without any further harm. He gets his fourth strike out of the night, but the Cats pick up a big run. A one hit, one error, and they leave two runners on base. Seventh inning, the bottom half coming up. We're tied 3-3. This Father's Day, treat Dad like a... Springs Alley in the bottom of the seventh will send up the top of the batting order. Mark Parsons, Drew Kearns, and Rick Freeman. So Hanky has his work cut out for him if this game's to go into extra innings. Right now, it's all tied up at three and three. Cats got one run in the first, and then they've got one in the sixth and one in the seventh. Valley got all three of theirs in one inning. That was back in the third on a three-run home run by Brent Harrell off of Steve Huffman. All right, here is Parsons. He's single, walked, and hit into a double play. Line drive, base hit. The winning run is on. That means that Harrell will get a chance to bat here unless the Cats can turn two. Well, he didn't waste any time getting that ball up the middle. No, he just reached down and he drilled that right over the mound into center field for a hit. I would think right here they'll be trying to punt him along. The winning run at first base with nobody out. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, the decision is up to Mark Hankey on the mound now. As Huffman is off of the hook. Here's the pitch. Curve. It's in too close. Cats with single runs in the sixth and seventh have come back to tie at 3-3. The pitch. Swing and a foul in and out of the glove of Kruger. One ball, one strike. Kearns has walked, fly to left, and popped out to the catcher. Hawks have out hit the Wildcats, 5-4. And I've got the winning run down to first base in the person of Mark Parsons. The stretch, the pitch, curve, too close. Two balls, one strike. On deck, Rick Freeman, the right fielder. He's singled in three trips tonight. Here's the pitch. Fly ball center field. Don't worry about it. Dedrick coming in. He's under it. He's got it. One god. Kearns lost the fly ball to center. Here is Freeman, who struck out twice and singled. Struck out twice against Huffman, and he singled off of Mark Hankey, leading off the fifth inning, but then he was doubled up. Hankey since coming in has walked one, struck out one, has really been in control of the game. 
been uh, he's been effective. Here's the pitch. Outside, one ball, no strikes. You do not want to let this guy get on and move the winning run into scoring position for Harold. You'd like to have him bat with a runner at first if he's to come up at all. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Ooh, good stop by Kruger behind the plate. Two balls, no strikes. Outfield straight away and deep. Chats would like to get two here. The stretch and the 2-2 pitch. In there for a strike. Hawks with three runs, five hits, one error. The Wildcats three runs, four hits, and two errors. The stretch and the 2-1 pitch. Here it is. Swing and a miss. He had a mighty cut. Freeman trying to jerk it down the right field line. Hankey's worked his way back even now with a hitter. Two and two. the damage by the Hawks tonight on a three-run homer in the third and Brent Harrell's on deck. Brown ball to the right side and Simmers gloves it, turns those first out. He saved the base hit right there. But the runner moves to second base for Brent Harrell and you know what that means. He's going to get an intentional walk right here. They're not going to flirt with Harrell. They're going to put him on. Simmers ranging far to his left, plugged the hole. That was headed for right field. He gloved it, got himself upright out of Ryan Sandberg and threw him out. Simmers making a couple of good plays out there coming in to play second when Hanky came in to pitch. Freeman is out four to three, and Harrell is walked. That run down there doesn't mean a tinkers. So Harrell gets a free pass to first, and here's Tony Pritchett. Pritchett hit into a double play his last time up. Left-handed batter with the winning run at second base. Cats hoping to go extra innings there. Three and one in extra innings this year. Here's the pitch outside of ball. The only loss in extra innings came to Vincent. One ball, no strikes. Hanky check. Here it is. Strike, a fastball in there. One and one count to Pritchett, the left-handed hitter. He's walked twice, hit into that double play to end the fifth. The one-one, here it is. Long drive, look out, way back, left field. Dedrick on the run, the Hawks are gonna win the championship. Pritchett doubles into the left center field corner. And the Hawks have beaten the Wildcats four to three. Pritchett has just sent the Hawk fans into delirium here. And a bitter loss for the Wildcats who battle back but come up short here in the championship game. Springs Valley has captured its first regional baseball title. Pritchett hit one in the alley to left center. That chase Parsons home from second. And the Hawks have beaten the Wildcats four to three. We'll be back with the totals on the game in a minute. Dwayne Kniss excavating of Celestine has all the big equipment to get your heavy duty jobs. Club Wagon. Start of the tournament with a record of 12 and two. And the loss goes to Mark Hankey, who is four and three and closes out his senior year here. The Wildcats picking up single runs in the sixth and seventh to battle back from a 3-1 deficit to tie it at 3-3. But in the seventh, Mark Parsons led off of the hit. Drew Kearns then flied to center. Freeman granted out to Simmers at second base with Parsons going to second. Brent Harrell, who had a three-run homer in the third, then was intentionally walked, but that uh, backfired as it turned out. But it was a good move anyway. You didn't want to fool with Harrell in that uh, situation. And uh, Mark Hankey just made the pitch a little too good. The outer part of the plate, and Troy Pritchett, a left-handed batter, went with it and drilled it. Into the alley in left center, sending Parsons home with a game winner. And so Troy Pritchett comes up with a game winning run batted in here as it turns out. And for the Wildcats, they close out the year with a uh, record of uh, 21 and 11. And uh, Valley now will continue on into the Summer State here one week from today as they have improved to 20 and 7. 
And so the Hawks uh, come up with a stunner here today and win their first regional baseball title and uh, deny the Wildcats a 10th regional championship. So the Cats now in regional title games are 9-4, and four, and the season, as I'll said, has come to a halt. Hope you have enjoyed it. We certainly have enjoyed bringing all the action your way throughout the 1988 baseball season. And uh, we'll be back at it again, I suppose, next year, as the Wildcats uh, will have several uh, lettermen returning next year, including their number one and two pitchers. Anyway, it's congratulations to the Springs Alley Blackhawks of Larry Pritchett, who have come in here today and have beaten Ligoti 7-2 to avenge a regular season loss and then took out the tournament favorite here tonight, Jasper, by a score of 4-3 to and a fine pitching performance by Robbie Denbo. Mark Hankey took the loss but uh, did a good, creditable job. Uh, Steve Hubman started on the mound and I just didn't have it. He struck out six, but he walked five. And, of course, the big blow off of him was that three-run homer in the third. But then the Cats came back to tie it. Was some real clutch hitting there in the sixth and seventh innings, but it just wasn't to be in the final 4-3. For Al Pillsbury, this is Bob Simmer saying so long from Recreation Field, where Valley has beaten the Wildcats 4-3. That's the way that we stayed all the way up into the sixth inning of play. Top half of the sixth for Jasper Whiting, a let off with a walk. Kruger flat out to right. Then Aubrey doubled to bring in the run, and he was left stranded. That made it a 3-2 to two ball game. Top half of the seventh. Lem Kula got on with an error. He then went to second. Dedrick above single, moved him over to third. And then Hickey with an RBI sacrifice fly to center field made it 3-3. Three to three. And then, in the seventh for Valley, the winning seventh, Mark Parsons opened it up with a solid single to center field. Drew Kearns then flied out to center field for out number one. Rick Freeman grounded to the second baseman. Simmers threw him out at first, but that moved Parsons over to second. They intentionally walked Brent Harrell, and then that brought up Troy Pritchett, and Pritchett with a 1-1 count, lined it into left center field for a double, and that brought home the winning run as Valley wins the ball game by a score of 4-3. to three. Here, their first ever baseball regional, and it comes here at the Jasper defeating the home team and also the defending regional champions, the Jasper Wildcats. The Valley fans still out on the field celebrating. Now Coach Larry Pritchett is slowly, hopefully, trying to get away from some of the people down on the field. We want to get him up here and get a few words with him before we sign off here. A big win for Valley here tonight, and of course they'll be right back here next Saturday afternoon in the Jasper Semi-State. The game two, I think they'll play the winner of either Seymour or New Albany here in this uh, Jasper Semi-State. Valley wins it by a score of four to three, and head coach Larry Pritchett will be making his way up here momentarily. We'll be talking with the winning coach you're listening to the Jasper Regional on WUME FM 95. The boys at Eddie Gilstra. We're back at Recreation Field. Jasper Valley has won the baseball regional by a score of 4-3. to three. Winning coach Larry Pritchett, first of all, coach, congratulations on a big win. Well, thanks a lot, David. I'm worn out from coming all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a big win for us. We, uh, I don't know, we had... Uh, couple of miscues out there and made the game a lot closer than what we was hoping to be. We had them down three to one. We thought maybe that'd be the inning score. Had, a, had an error and a, and a walk and they scored on those. Then early in the ball game, we had the one fly ball that, uh, you know, it's twilight. The ball was mm-hmm. kind of hard to see at that time, got over center fielder's head, but we played well. Probably had a good, strong game pitching. I haven't seen the stats. I don't know how many strikeouts or walks they had, but I thought our kids just come out and played a good ball game. I had him down for three strikeouts and five walks, and you and I talked before the ball game, and you touched on it, that for you to win, you'd have to play a flawless game in the field, and except for that one error there in the seventh, it was, boy, it was a great double play you turned. Yeah, that was good. We just almost had another one. The ball was hitting us a little bit slow, but that, that double play brought us out of a jam early in the ball game, and I think it gave our kids a lot of confidence. And then I thought you might be in a bit of trouble there that one time when you had the bases loaded and you hit a sacrifice fly where you had to fly out the center and they nailed the man coming home for the double play, took you out of an inning there. That's right. It it took two perfect throws. Uh, Balls hit pretty shallow. We maybe, uh, you know, maybe shouldn't have gone. We we like to gamble on those, and uh, they had a good relay and 
the relay man made another good throw to play, so it, and just barely got him. So, it, you know, if one of those throws has been off just a little bit while well, we just scored that run. 20th win is a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> I think the most victories ever had before was 16 in the season, and uh, we've extended that for a few games now, so we're pretty happy with the whole thing. We got anything planned on the way home or not? I don't know. <laughs> My planning is over right now. I'm just going to kind of relax and let somebody else do the planning until we get home and see what develops. Well, you're right back here next week, and that's got to be a great feeling. Yeah, I don't know who we're playing. We'll have some strong teams up here from Evansville, I'm sure. But uh, like I said, our kids don't quit. They go out and play the ball game, and we'll just come back and give it a good shot and see what happens. Larry Pritchett, thank you very much. Congratulations to you and the Blackhawks regional champions. That sounds good. That sounds pretty great. Thanks a lot, Dave. <laughs> Larry Pritchett, the head coach of Springs Valley Blackhawks, as the Blackhawks win it 4-3 to three to claim the regional championship here in 1988 at Jasper High School. Well, we'd like to thank our engineer and producer, producer Bill Farnsley. Most of all, thanks to you for listening. And, of course, to our sponsors, Springs Valley Bank and Trust.